The next topic in our study of light, the ray optics model, is a study of mirrors. And for starters, when we're studying mirrors, we need to know a bit about the different types of mirrors. So our first type of mirror is a flat mirror, and this would be the type of mirror we see almost everywhere surrounding us. Our bathroom mirrors are flat mirrors. Our rear view mirrors in our car are flat mirrors. The mirror that you look into uh, to check your appearance is probably a flat mirror. The mirrors in store dressing rooms are typically flat mirrors. The name says it all. It's just flat and they have their own special properties. The other types of mirrors that we'll study are curved mirrors and they're curved in a specific way. We actually call them spherical mirrors because it's like they're a portion of a sphere. And there's two types of spherical mirrors. They're called concave mirrors and convex mirrors. You can see this image on the bottom left here showing uh, the difference between concave and convex and that difference being which side is the reflective surface, which side is shiny. I like to think of it as if a concave mirror would be the side of a spoon that you would be eating with that would hold your food, whereas a convex mirror would be the back side of a spoon. These two different types of mirrors, of course, because of the difference in their curvature um, and which side is shiny, will have very different properties and we'll be studying those properties. But before we can study the property of any of these types of mirrors, there's some, some terminology we need to know. So the next thing this video is going to introduce you to is some vocabulary that we'll use for both mirrors and lenses, as a matter of fact, which will be the next thing that we study. And the majority of these terms come in pairs. So our first pair are a real image and a virtual image. A real image is defined as an image that can be projected onto a screen. So um, we will learn some rules about where the image is formed and where that image is formed. If we were to put a screen or like a piece of paper at that location, we would actually see the image on that piece of paper. So like, for example, in a, um, a movie theater, that image that is formed on the screen is a real image whereas a virtual image is one that cannot be projected onto a screen. And we will see several examples of virtual images in class. The next pair of uh, terms is the object distance and the image distance. And these are both distances measured from the mirror. So the object distance, which is represented by the letter P in an equation, is the distance from the object to the mirror. And we measure that um, on what we call the principal axis, or a line that kind of goes through the center of that mirror. So that would be this horizontal line that you can see through here. Uh, let me go ahead and highlight that principal axis right here. So we would measure our object distance from our object to the mirror. So that would be that distance that I've just highlighted in blue right there. The image distance is then the distance from the image to the mirror. And so for this particular picture that I have here, you can see that this image is right here. Oh, sorry about that. And um, I don't have that distance perfect, but you can kind of get the idea that it would be right about there, it would be that image distance. The next two terms are focal point and focal length. The focal point of a mirror is defined as being the location where all the reflected rays intersect or where all the reflected rays would appear to intersect. It'll be different depending on which type of mirror we have. And we'll of course learn a whole bunch more about that. And then the focal length is simply the distance from the focal point to the mirror. Once again, measured along that principal axis. My last two terms are center of curvature and radius of curvature. The center of curvature is a location and to understand exactly what that location is, I have this image that you see on the bottom right here. So if my spherical mirror were a portion of an actual sphere, uh, like what you see here, then the center of curvature would be the center of that sphere, and the radius of curvature would be the distance from that center to the mirror itself. 
we will learn that there are relationships between these quantities and uh, that sometimes these locations, the focal point and the center of curvature, can be helpful for predicting uh, what our image is going to look like.